So what were the big themes of Pesach by the Rebbe? Huh? <laughs> That's Emilchad Das It gives a Muna and it gives a Fuah. And by the way, for those who do not know, Beruch Nyeso and Yonim, the Fuah is Tshuva. Michal de means the bread of faith. Michal de means the bread of healing. And the way it's brought out in Sfarim from the Zoyar is the first Seder is Michal de is bread of Amuna. And the second Seder is Michal de is bread of Rafua, which, by the way, if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you don't have because you have only one Seder. So the Amuna is a, com- the, the matzah is a combination of Amuna and Tshuva. But in that order, not first Tshuva and then Amuna. First Amuna, then Tshuva. First Hashem took Yidin out of Mitzrayim, and then they started to count Svirah Sa'imid. Because Svirah Sa'imid is a Tshuva-related idea. Svirah Sa'imid is the beater of the Nefesh Bahamas. Because Oimid is, bar- barley is Meichel Bahim. You know this from Hasidus. Barley is animal food. So the carbon Oimid represents the Mevadas and the, the Midas. That's why you have the Svirah, you count the beater Mevadas and the Midas. You mevadah the nefesh bahamis. You you bring clarity to the animal soul, and that's the avoda of svira. So first you have a munah, and immediately you have tshuva. So if you live in Eretz Yisrael, you only have one seder. So in the same seder you have to have a munah and you have to have tshuva. If you live outside of Eretz Yisrael, and you have two sedarim, so the first seder the focus is on a munah, and the second seder the focus is on tshuva which is advantageous, which is better, right? Now, girls, there's a very interesting nafkamina lemaise when this comes out, okay? Does anybody here know anything about other Jews outside Chabad? Are you all brainwashed, closed-minded, and stuck? Anybody, <laughs> anybody have relatives or friends that go to a school? Anybody know Jews? You know non-Chabad Yidin? Yeah? Chassidim and Misnagdim, Sfardim and Rashkenazim. Huh? Misnagdim. So this is not going to work, but... Anybody else? Anybody know non Chabad Hasidim? Yeah. yeah, you do? Yeah? When did they do the first Svita? We're like Misnagdim on this. A lot of things we're like Misnagdim. Um, ha? Huh? You know Hasidim? They do Svita after the second Seder, in the middle of the night. They finish the Haggadah. And it, if you look in the Pelish Haggadahs and Hasidish Haggadahs, I don't know what Svadim do. Pelish Hasidim count the first Svita at 2 o'clock in the morning. After the Seder. Now, Lubavitchers agree with the reason. But Lubavitchers are trapped between <laughs> Halach and Chsidis. The right time to count Svira, especially the first Svira, is the beginning of the day, beginning of the night. You're supposed to have complete days. You're supposed to count Svira as soon as you can. Because you count Mitzvah, Lemim, the Yeim, you're supposed to count whole days. If you count the Svira at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're missing the first six hours. So I'll pee nigla, you have to count Svira when we do. With Mairev or after Mairev. But I'll pee Kabbalah, Svira Soim is supposed to be after the Seder, because the Seder is a Muna and Svira Soim is Tshuva. That's the reason for this custom of Pai Lishach Sidim that they count the first Svira at 2 o'clock in the morning. What do the Chabad Nikis do like the Pai Because we have Misnag the Shijins. <laughs> when it comes to a lot of Yanam of Halacha, we don't do things a pee Kabbalah, we do a pee Halacha. So we hold that it's more important to do Svita on time in, in the clock rather than do Svita on time in terms of the spiritual scheduling is that after the Seder you should count Svita. Because Svita is Tshuva. And the Sdarim, a little bit of Amuna, a little bit of Tshuva, it's like a mix. So you finish with the two Sdarim and then you count Svita. But we do Svita on time. But that's how it breaks out. The Kazai is Matzah, gives Amuna. And the Gazayis Matzah is an infant tshuva, a fuah. It gives us an infant healing, infant tshuva. Oh, so the Rebbe's kvetch when it comes to matzah, which is important to hear, is the Rebbe says when eating a Gazayis Matzah, you're not eating bread, which is a skula for a muna. You're eating a muna itself. That's what the Rebbe says. You're, when you eat matzah, you're not eating bread, which is a skula. It has a, a property that strengthens your muna. Eating matzah is posh it, eating emuna as it's in a gash music form. Akazai is matzah is a shtikel emuna. It's a piece of emuna. It's a piece of emuna. That's what matzah is. And um, I, I guess I'll say this. Um, there are yidin, there are even yidin in Kran Heights, who because of Yiddish Shabbat, because of Frumkite, do not eat matzah whole Pesach. There are such Jews. 
There are Yidin who make matzahs just for the Seder. They eat matzahs by this daughter. That means they'll make literally six matzahs or whatever number of matzahs need for their family members. And the rest of Pesach, they'll make Kiddush on wine. And then they'll give a Suda on a second cup of wine. I have a daughter that has, uh, they call it celiac. I don't know what they call it. She does, she's not allowed to eat bread. So we make Kiddush, she drinks another cup of wine. That's a Kaveh Suda. There's very from a Yidin who don't eat matzah whole Pesach. Because the place in the whole house where there's the biggest risk of chametz, the place in your whole house, there's not going to be chametz in your chicken soup unless you put noodles in, you understand? There's not going to be chametz in your applesauce unless you put chametz in it was. Chametz dik matzah milk. There's not going to be, your food's not going to be chametz dik. Matzah is flour and water. It's the prime place for chametz to be. And if chas v'shom, the dough wasn't kneaded properly, or the matzah wasn't baked properly, the place to worry most about chomets is Nekazayis matzah, which is of course part of the reason why the Alter Rebbe made such a big deal out of shruya, out of not eating gebroks, except for the last day of Pesach, because shruya is mixing matzah with water, and if chas v'shalom, there is flour in the matzah, which is not fully kneaded with the dough, then it can become chomets very, very quickly. That's the halacha. So uh, we're very particular about Gibraks, a whole Pesach. The last day Pesach, all of a sudden, we become not just, we permit it, we make a big deal out of it. Mishum Simchas Yomtiv. The Rebbe had a custom, it says in the Kutasiches from the Minhagim, to be, to Davke Gibrak with every single tafshel of a tafshel, every food you eat, you eat Gibraks. You know why? Because in Achancha Pesach, you're sure that the Abish is going to protect you from Chomets. That's the deal. Last day Pesach, you did seven days the Avoido, Hashem is going to protect us from Chomets, and we celebrate it by Dafti eating Gebrox. Gebrox is, is a great idea, by the way. Every year we all hate Pesach, and Gebrox makes us forget how much we hate it. I'm telling you, it's true. The Gebrox is a great chap. Seven days Nebuchadnezzar, you eat the same food day after day after day after day. You eat the last day Gebrox. You, by the time you're finished with the 24 hours of Gebrox, you're so shikha from Gebrox, you forgot about all your complaints. And Pesach was a great Yom Tif. It's such a chap, the Gebrox. <laughs> if we did Gebrox the whole Pesach, Gebrox would be boring. It works like a charm. Shruya, if you think about it and you're honest about it, it mamish, it's, it, what the Alter Rebbe says, Simchas Yom Tif, it really makes you happy when you finally get the Akhraj of Pesach and you can enjoy yourself, huh? <laughs> What's the big deal? The same matzah, the same kashal of Pesach food. You can put it in water, but we're all so excited. Gebrax, it's a, it's a gaval. It works. Gebrax, I know my, myself, my home, Gebrax. You forget about all your complaints of Pesach, what the window with the Gebrax. But anyway, so there's a lot of Yid who don't eat matzah whole Pesach. I know such Jews. But Abi Chassidus, you have to. Abi Chassidus, you have to. Because there's something called matzah's reshus. Right? Matzah has two themes. Matzah has the theme of amuna, and matzah has the theme of bittel. Right? It's flat, it has no taste, it shows on bittel. In addition to the idea of refuah. So matzah is, is, a, is, a, is a holy food that strengthens our amuna, it gives us bittel, and it heals us chashram of a sick bagash means and you eat it Pesach. Why do you eat it Pesach? Because we're born as a nation. Pesach, we're brand new. Pesach, we're born. We're brand new. Pesach, we're born as a nation. We're born. Just like when a baby is born, the first thing you give that baby is a Muna. You don't teach him to until he's three and so on. <coughs> a baby doesn't learn. In his first years of life, he hears about the Abish, he learns about a Muna. In Yonam of Kedusha, the holiness. So each year on Pesach, when we're born again, we start over with a Muna. So the first day Hashem commands you, you you have to eat matzah. Hashem says, I don't trust you the first night, I'm to eat matzah because you need to eat emunah, you need to eat bittel, you need to eat refuah. After the first day, the Abisha says, chometz you can't eat, but matzah I'm not making you eat. It says in my Mori Hasidus that there's an Indian of eating matzah every day of Pesach, because every day of Pesach is called matzah to the shus, the matzah that we eat because we choose to freely without a divine command. And it says in the Maimorim, in the Sikhs, matzah to the shus is higher than matzah's choyve. The matzah you eat, which you're not mechoyev to eat, is a higher madreg of matzah. In other words, eating matzah whole Pesach is giving you a muna on a madreg of mitzvahs, where Hashem commands you, and a madreg which is higher than mitzvahs, where a Jew volunteers by himself to eat matzah. 
Okay, so that's one of the big cocks of the Rebbe on Pesach is matzah. Anybody got anything else? What else? If you go to the bakery, what else? Then you wait 20 minutes for the next box of cookies. Anybody, what else do you have a besides for matzah? Making sure every Jew has matzah. Okay. Every year, the Rebbe Kazai is matzah. So that's on Davke Kosher, the matzah, and Davke. The Rebbe, I don't know if I talked, Thursday I spoke about this, but probably a different group of girls. The, <laughs> there are Jews who make machine matzah. You know that. Machine matzah is cheaper, cleaner, better, and kosherer. Machine matzah, the machine that's kneading your dough is not going to forget to mix it. The guy who stands by there by the bowl and presses the whole day like this can get lazy. Machines do their job. If they don't do their job, they break. But if they're working, they're doing their job correctly. There are from a yidin, very from a yidin, who dafki eat machine matzah because it is halachically more kosher. The problems that we have with it are so small. One of them is that the machines are metal and they can get hot. And today there's many ways to avoid that. And the other thing is that there's no lishma, right? Lishay matzah mitzvah. A machine can't say they have kavan or lishay matzah mitzvah. There's no such thing as Jewish machines. I mean, there's no such thing as goyish machines either. There's just machine machines. You know what I'm saying? Nishka yid, nishka goya doimim. But a doimim cannot say lishay matzah mitzvah. So you put it on, you say lishay matzah mitzvah, you take it out, lishay matzah mitzvah. We're very firm about it. But the part of the matzah is the zeah. Part of the matzah is the fact that Yidin worked on this with their own hands. They sweated when they made the matzah. It's what puts the amuna into the matzah. So the Rebbe wants every Shabbat Kazai's matzah. The Rebbe wants Yidin to sell chametz also. And it should be dafka shmura matzah, handmade shmura matzah, because that's where the amuna is. And the hard work of the bubbas from Russia, or wherever they come from these days, in the matzah becheri. Anybody else? No topics? That's it? One, what's your topic? Minhagim. What about minhagim? They get annoying. They get annoying. You're talking about the, what you don't eat, or cleaning for Pesach, or what you do at the Seder. Um, I don't know. All of it. And what's the Rebbe get kocht? Where do you find by the Rebbe kocht minhagim on Pesach? Do you know? That's right. I think we brought it up once this year before. Our manishtan is different in the whole world. Why? Because Lubavitch has to be different. If Chas Tashom, Lubavitch, like everybody else, then there wouldn't be a Lubavitch. Everybody does the Dalad Kashis Apisvara. Most Jews in the world, and I think this is true of Sfaradim also, but it could be wrong, the first Kashi is Matzah. Because Matzah is a mitzvah to say Deir Aysa. The second Kashi is Marer. Because Marer is a mitzvah to say Deir Abana. The third kasha is matpila. There's a yudim because it's a mini Yisrael. <coughs> the last kasha is mesubin because that kasha was added and they took away the kasha by Basat Sli. They used the fourth in the Mishnah, there's four kashas, but there's different fourth kasha. None of your brothers have done it by the Seder, huh? My kids did that for many years. The fifth kasha is. Gekocht, gebrot, no gedempt. The nach from Pesach, no ale gebrot in the flesh. Tzli, only roasted. So when the times of the times of the base of Mikdash, they would ask that kasha. When the base of Mikdash was destroyed, they took out the kasha from Tzli and they put it in Mesubin. So Mesubin is last. But to say that it is, Matbil was after Matzah and Marder, because first comes the day, I said, then comes the day, Rabban, then comes Matbil, the minute. So Chabad does like our best friend. Who's Chabad's best friend? Huh? Told you this already. Forgot. Who's Chabad's best friend? The Rambam. The Rambam has this say that, like we do. At the first kasha is matbilin. The second kasha is matzah. Did you know that? The Rambam, I told this to you. I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of sleeping. I don't remember that. <laughs> you brought it up. Yeah. And I said the Rambam. The Rambam say that the four kashas the same as ours. Matbilin, matzah, modem, and First matbilin, then matzah. So the Rebbe has a sikha on it. Why do we put matbilin first? And the Rebbe answers the kasha to bring out the point of minig Yisrael, teirihi. That the minig Yisrael, a Jewish custom, which is not minat teiris, not even with divinity seifrim, is not only important, it has a kedusha which is higher than the mitzvahs which are amid and even higher than the mitzvahs which are amid and you put them first, and you put them first. Now on Pesach there's an additional component, which can segue into another thing. Personal Ah, oh, there's an answer. But let me first finish with the, with the, with the Matbilin. On Pesach it's especially important. Because, and this is important to know, I mean you know it, but still you have to hear it, okay? 
the design of the Pesach Seder that revolves around the children. Right? It's a mitzvah Seder. I said, the to tell the story to the kid. You have three or four psukim in the Chomish. Right, three of a psukim, where when it comes to the Pesach Seder, the Kiddalach ask and we answer. But the design is, you don't sit down with the kids at the meal and you give them a lecture like you do in school, because they'll have the same outcome that you have in school. They're going to be bored, you understand, they're going to make trouble, they're going to light a fire, they're going to run out into the hall, they're going to go hide behind the house and play basketball. You sit at the Seder and you do funny things. And by doing funny things, you get the children to ask, and that's the Iker Inyam and Hagim. Where do you have things that you do at the Seder that make children curious, and they should sit, and they should ask, Manishtana. And once the child asks, and you tell them that was a brilliant question, so then you, the child pays attention to the answer, is through the Minhagi Yisrael. That's another, in other words, on Pesach particularly, the role of Minhagim is very, very strong, very acute, very important, because the Minhagim is what brings the children to a space where they're prepared to ask a question, and once they ask the question, they'll pay attention to the answers. We all know the best way to teach is to create an engagement between the students and the teachers. You ask the children, ask, you answer, you ask, the children answer, and that's what you do when they say, right? And of course, the first thing you do at is what do you do at Girls, you notice? I hope you notice. You make Kiddush, right? Is that normal or not normal? It's normal. Except that everybody drinks the whole cup. Right? Now I want to ask you, what is your custom? When your father makes Kiddush, what about the baby Agafa? You're supposed to make four baby Agafans. Even though the first and the second, there's a lot of Yidin who make only two baby Agafans. You know that. There's many Jews, including Hasidim, they make a baby Agafa in the first cup. The second cup, baby Agafa, the Brach Hashem the third cup is after benching, so you make another baby agafen. There are Jews who only make two baby agafens, the first cup and the third cup. We make four. Because it's a birchas on mitzvah, it's not a birchas on nen, and you're making a bracha on the mitzvah, not on the hanoah. So it's four separate mitzvahs, four separate brachas. So when you, Father, makes kids, I tell my children, to, my girls, to read with me the whole kiddush. We, we, we all read the Kiddush together. They do it quietly, but that's, that's my opinion. It's not, I don't know what the halacha is. That's just the way I feel. But the Be'er Piyagafen for sure, even if your parents told you, don't wait Kiddush with me, listen to my Kiddush, you should certainly say the Be'er Piyagafen for the same reason you make all the other Be'er Piyagafens. It's a mitzvah. It's a Be'er Piyagafen. So Kiddush is normal, yeah? Kiddush is normal, yeah? Huh? On Pesach. Because the Dalit Koises, the Dalit, you drink your own cup. You don't rely on your father. And you drink Rev Kais or Kala Kais. One of the halachas of Dalit Kais is you can't make Kiddush when it's still day. You can't make Kiddush when it's still day. Because the Dalit Kais have to be drunk when it's for sure night. Because it's the Chiv of Pesach is Davke after after Tzitzik Echovim. Not Shkia, Tzitzik Echov. Now, so you washing for bread. Normal, washing normal or not normal? Pretty normal, yeah. You just don't make a bracha, right? So, oh, oh, no, no, oh, 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 oh. You talk, you don't talk. It depends on the house, yeah. Then you dip vegetable. Normal or not normal? Weird. Okay, fine. So the kid says, "What's going on?" But what do you do after you eat the vegetable? What do you do next? You go back to normal. You take the the lechamishne like you do every single Shabbos, and you break it. So the kid, what's the kid's expecting? Huh? They give him a piece. Every Shabbos you break the bread, you give him a piece. Today we're going to break the bread and piece, and you break the bread, you hide it. Excuse me, I want to eat. So between the matbilin, between the yirok, between the karpas, and the uh, yachatz, where you break the bread. But there's a third thing. What is the third thing? What's the third thing? What's the third thing? You fill up the second cup. Now, normally, at a meal, when do you fill the second cup? When you bench. So here the kid plots his. You gave me a piece of vegetable. Vedic of Yakazai. It's a lochus, right? I wanted potato, not onion, because I don't want to have a birdie mouth. And they gave me a little piece. Why? Because Vedic of Yakazai. Everyone gets very fruit of the Vedic of Yakazai. Then you break bread, and instead of eating it, you hide it. And then you take out the second cup, and the kid says, Manishtana, I don't know, we didn't eat yet. What are you benching? You tell them tonight there's four cups, not two. And we're just starting the show. <laughs> so 
So minahagim on Pesach are very important. They're very important because they are a critical part of what is central to the Seder, the Chinuch of the children. Latmiat inekis. The Seder revolves around children. Azedas apitera. That's what it is. It's true of Yechsidus. The nation of Israel is born. When you're a little kid, what do you do? You go to school, you have an education. The Pesach Seder, the Matzah is about Emuna. When you're born, you have Emuna. It revolves around the children. Because by the Seder, we're all children. Right? And you know, Mistama, that it says in our Haggadah, the Kana Ben Sheel Ma. So it says in the Rebbe's Haggadah, the Kana Ben Sheel goes on Kinar Yisrael Vayaveyu. Right? The Rebbe spoke many, many times that Chasasham, someone doesn't have any children. And he doesn't have a father. So, well, I'm sure you know the custom, right? I don't know what happens in your house. Is there a cutoff line when you ask the four kasha? So you ask it until you're 95 by your parents. Mm-hmm. Because, it's a, because every guy has a minhagim, right? Depends on the minhagim. But when every, or the children finish saying manishtana, the adults all say manishtana quietly. And every child, including those children who don't have parents anymore, say tate, echvil, badi, fregen, fir, kashas. There's a sikha from the Rebbe, where the Rebbe by Fabregen said tate, echvil, badi, fregen, fir, kashas. Because the tate goes on the Eibishter. And you want to be made the kinar Yisrael v'yaveo. That Hashem's relationship with the Jewish people is like we're children. And it's very good for the Eibishter to look at us like little kids because little kids do whatever they want. Their parents can help but they love them anyway, you see. So by the Seder, we are also children. Not just as the Seder around the little kids that are biologically little, that are chronologically little, and you do all of these things to keep them awake, awake and have them ask questions and so on and so forth. The adults are also in the beginning of Nar, of Kidalach, by the Seder, Ki Na Yisrael Vayaveyo. So that's another theme of Pesach, Menhagim. But the third thing, you mentioned the idea of personal gula, personal gula. You know the story with the Rebbe? You know the story, you just don't know it. <laughs> You don't know that you know the story because you don't know which story I want you to know, yeah? <laughs> My mother was in that story. I remember when it happened. There was a spring, con- the winter, mid-winter convention of Sheikh Abad in Detroit. I was before Mitzvah. So it was in the 1970s. I think I was before Mitzvah. No, I'm not sure anymore. And um, we, my mother couldn't go to the convention. We had no money. But she won the black girl to go. She represented the black. It was like a big deal. Mother left the house for like two days. The house almost fell to pieces. Man, mother was away for like a, from a Thursday till a Monday with Gefelach. Don't ask. Anyway, they went to Detroit. There was a huge snowstorm, and the airport was closed, so uh, they couldn't leave. So the women who were in Detroit were in the airport. There's no planes. So Mrs. Popek, Allah Shalom, she was the uh, director of the Sheikh Abad in those days. She called up the Rebbe's office to let the Rebbe know that the women who came to the convention from all over America, from New York, are stuck in Detroit because the plane, the Rebbe is shut down, doesn't let us know. So, Rabbi Klein says to her, wait, he goes into the Rebbe and he comes back onto the phone and he says to her, the Rebbe will verstehen was mein stuck. <laughs> oh, the Rebbe wants to understand what is the meaning of the word stuck. So Mrs. Popak, who's American-born, figured that the Rebbe doesn't speak a good English, and Rabbi Klein for sure does speak good English, and they don't understand the word. So, <laughs> so she tried to explain it to Rabbi Klein, and Rabbi Klein says to Mrs. Popak, I, I think the Rebbe understands English. Even I know what stuck is. I drive a car too. The Rebbe was just saying, what does that mean a Jew is stuck? If you're in Detroit for an extra day, that means you have to use the time for something good. And maybe if you'll do your shlichas in Detroit, all of a sudden the airport will open up and you'll be unstuck. And the Rebbe said to them, a Jew is never stuck. You have your plans, Abish has his plans, but your plans don't wait the way you want. It's not the pshat, you're stuck. The Abish has other plans. And then they were unstuck and my mommy came home. <laughs> That's the end of that story. Um, but that's what Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim is all about. All of us are stuck, right? This I can't do, this I can't do, this, I, this is too hard, this is too hard. There's a lot of, we have a lot of Mitzrayims, you know, that's what the Rebbe is explaining to. We have a lot of Mitzrayims, a lot of Mitzrayims. All our Mitzrayim have the same name, but we don't like to call him by his name because we're very sensitive, we don't hurt his feelings. The name of all our Mitzrayims is Yetzir Hara. You've heard of Yetzir Hara? You've heard of Yetzir Hara? 
That's all our Mitzrayim is the Yetzir Hara. But Mitzrayim means I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And uh, there's a lot of Mitzrayim. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of Mitzrayim. One example of Mitzrayim is the Mitzrayim that comes from fear. Chamoida, I'm afraid. The things in the world that make me afraid, and because they make me afraid, I'm stuck. What's another example of Mitzrayim? Huh? Weakness, weakness, taivis, they make me weak, they make me weak. When people give in to their desires, the more you give in to your desires, the more your desires control you, and the more your desires control you, the less control you have over your desires. Mevet ogishvach, you become weak. The thing about, the, if, you, if you studied the Mudechol, when they talk about the Western world, and particularly America, so one of the ways they insult us, you know, it's a mitzvah to put yourself down, one of the ways they put us down, even though we're the best civilization that's ever existed, but it's a mitzvah to put us down, is uh, we're consumeristic. Consumerism. You ever heard that word? I'm sure you heard the word in high school, yeah? You hated that teacher, so you wanted to forget it, but you heard the word, yeah? What does consumerism mean? Anybody know? A banda Ah? That people just like to buy more and more and more. We take more out of nature we put in that we're using the resources of the world in an unsustainable way. You just take, you just take. Consumer, we buy. Why do we buy? Because I can have money, I can, I can afford it. Consumerism. Consumerism translates into materialism. Our lives are very Gashmiistic. Gashmius, the nature of Gashmius is the more you have, the more you need. Especially if you look at your neighbor and your neighbor has something that you think is better than what you have. That whole cycle is another Mitzrayim. It's the Mitzrayim of weakness. What's the weakness? I don't need this. This is not good for me. I shouldn't have it, but I have it anyway. If I don't need it, I shouldn't have it, and it's bad for me, why do I have it? So the explanation is my neighbor, the explanation is my community, the explanation is the reputation. The truth is my lack of principle. My lack of ability. I know this isn't good for me, and yet I do it. I'm weak. That's a mitzrayim. So, so if we have two Mitzrayims, right? What's the first Mitzrayim? What was the first one? I forgot it already. Fear. Fear. The second one is weakness. Probably the worst, in my opinion, and certainly in my experience, is bad habits. The Mitzrayim of bad habits. You know what's a bad habit? Tochtelach. Kindelach. What's a bad habit? What time did you go to sleep last night? That's a bad habit. How many of you went to bed before midnight? Good for you! How many of you went to bed before 11 o'clock? You're <laughs> She's embarrassed, admit it. People, I want you to know, it's a one question test. What is the key to a successful life? Sleeping. A bedtime. Not sleep, a bedtime. The key to a successful life is a bedtime, but you have to finish that sentence. A bedtime that you actually keep. Huh? It's interesting to watch adolescents. <laughs> It's interesting to watch our lessons. Teenagers don't want to go to sleep. They're afraid they're going to miss something. By day, they walk around and shake it. They're so tired. They're physically very strong. If I did what you did, I'd chalash. But goof can't do it. But the result of this is your, your brain is always working at 35%, because the other 75% is still in bed. I'm sorry, I was sleeping. I didn't sleep enough last night, so I forgot the math. It's 65%. Bad habits are so bad. Bad habits is to eat too fast. Bad habits is to talk before you think. Bad habits is to stay up late. Bad habits is you're in the dormitory, you're about to go to bed, and there's a bull session, you're going in for five minutes, and then it's four hours later. That's a bad habit. Bad habits are gullus, they're mitzrayim. Those are three examples. Fear, weakness, and bad habits. And there are others, like anger, there are others. And these mitzrayim, anger is a good one. Anger is a very good, people who get angry, people who get upset, people who are hurt, somebody hurt you. And you're 100% right and they're 100% wrong. You have to let go of that anger, not because they deserve to be forgiven, you have to let hold of that anger because you don't deserve that they should continue to hold you. If somebody hurt you and you're angry at them, they still, they're still hurting you. It's a mitzayim. You're upset, it's not fair. It's talking not fair. Ooh, it's not fair. It's not fair. But if you want to live your life, you have to say, it's all there, it's his business. I cannot afford 
to let him, my, me, be angry at him because every day that he, I'm angry at him, he's still my master. And I'm not going to give him that satisfaction. But, so that's what Mitzrayim is. If the Vitzir is Mitzrayim. Vitzir Mitzrayim means stop to be afraid. Vitzir Mitzrayim means stop to be weak. Vitzir Mitzrayim means to control your bad habits. And Vitzir Mitzrayim means to let go of your anger. And those are just four examples. There's a Ribu Mitzrayim. This is what we call, girls, I'm going to say a very, very bad word, a really, really profane, I can get fired for this word, okay, so don't listen, okay, I'm not going to listen either, okay, don't listen, okay. This is what we call avoida. Oh, I actually said it, <laughs> avoida. Avoida means working on yourself, working on yourself. Working on yourself means going out of these mitzvahs. I was teaching Machon Chana years and years ago, and I was doing like a Q and A's, you know, like we do here so once in a while. I usually teach them from a text. We actually learn Torah, to believe it or not. Um, but whatever we have a like, free period, we do Q and A. So I'm sitting. There must have been I don't know, twelve girls, fifteen girls. It wasn't as a big a room as this. And uh, these are all Mochanchana girls, all Bali Chova, that are from a year or two or three or a lot. Of, some of them are coming back, but they're they're very idealistic. You know, I mean, I, I would imagine seminary based girls are also idealistic, but probably on average they're more idealistic. Don't be insulted. You're talking the most amazing group of girls in the world, but they're, they're very, they're very, in, they're, they want to do the right thing, but they're still people. When you become about true, you don't lose the age of heart, and maybe you got to get suspended for about two seconds and then he's back. But uh, they're people. And if you know anything about Machachana's dormitory, there's jealousies, and there's politics, and I don't talk to you, and I don't sit next to you. The same thing you have over here. I was once walking out of here, lunchtime, and there a whole bunch of high school girls sitting. I told this to you? So one table had 12 girls, six on each side, sitting together, crammed. Another table had five girls, another girl had eight, eight girls, another girl had four girls, and then one girl sitting by herself. It's heartbreaking. And you know what's the most heartbreaking thing of all? Nobody even sees her. Nobody even sees, and she's looking around like someone should invite her. Nobody even knows she's there. Nobody even knows she's there. Nobody even knows she's there. And you can't afford to go over to her because then your friends are going to say, oh, you're a neb, and you're going to lose your seat at your table. This is all part of Hasidishkeit in 2024. That's my opinion. But Mokhachan has that too. There goes Mokhachan, nobody sees. So they're people. So we're sitting in this class, and uh, we were talking about whatever. So somebody brought up one of high school girls' favorite expressions, I'm working on myself. So one of the students blurts out, Rabbi, I decided that working on myself means wishing I would be better. He took the whole air out of the balloon. It's like a poker hole into a balloon, pop! Because what she said was so true and so depressing. <laughs> But what she's saying in plain English, people don't work on themselves, they talk about themselves. I'm becoming a better person, do me a favor. The same fed I was a year ago, the same fed I was two years ago. I've shagged us to the fed, but this planet, we talk about it. Yeah, I, mean, I really care, I really care, I'm really mamish, what are you doing? I'm talking about it. But you should know, people can work on themselves, and people can change. But there's a rule. Slowly, step at a time, you create exercises. You make for yourself a plan of how you're going to fix this midah, the marshal. The midah of going to sleep late at night, which is probably the most costly ill in your life. Because you literally walk around most of your life without a full capacity brain, and certainly without a full capacity of nerves. Because you're tired all the time. Now one day you can have little babies, and then you're going to be tired, and you're not going to be able to help it. But now you could sleep, because you're going to But it's a bad, you could change, you could change a bad habit, but you have to create a plan with specific exercises, and then you have to do it, one day at a time. So what's the Pshat Pesach? It's a special moment. Right? It says, Nagod, it's explained in Hasidus, that Nigla Aleyeh Melech Malcham Lacham HaKadosh Baruch Hu Bechvei we did not leave Mitzrayim on our own. Hashem put the lights on, for a short while, put the lights on. And when Hashem put the lights on, you know what happened to us? We felt very strong. We felt not afraid, we felt not weak. We had no bad habits and we were angry at no one. So we ran out of Mitzrayim. And we knew instinctively that in about 20 minutes from now, we're going to be afraid again, we're going to have bad habits again, we're going to be weak again, and we're going to hate people again. 
You understand? Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim, Hashem revealed Himself and redeemed us. Pesach is a time of Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim means that every year when it comes Pesach, there's a light that's brought into the world that helps us redeem ourselves from our own stack, from our own stuff that we're stuck in. You understand? Now, if all you're going to do is eat matzah and sleep, nothing's going to change. But Pesach is an opportunity. Bechalal a yid's job is to go out of his limitations. Bechalal a yid's job is to be yitzim, be mitzayim, to go out of one mitzayim, after a second mitzayim, after a third mitzayim, after a fourth mitzayim. Pesach Hashem gives a special koyach. In other words, you pick the mitzayim you want to deal with. One, don't pick more than one. Pick one. Anger, laziness, bad habits, or weakness. And there's more. I just gave you four examples. You know what's another great mitzvah? Another one to put in the list? Doubt. I'm such a smart guy or gal, I think everything over one time too many. Doubt is a mitzvah. You thought about it, it was a good idea, but you thought about it again, there was a better idea. You thought about it, but you're still thinking about it. You're thinking about whether you thought about it correctly. Doubt is a mitzvah. You could pick one of your own mitzvahs and say, this pays, I'm going out of this mitzvah. How? You, you, make, you do the work. I said a bad word a second time in one class. Two dirty words in one class. You do the avoida of being mavada, that meter, one meter. And by the Pesach, this, the, by the Seder, this is the Kavana. The Pesach, <coughs> your Kavana by the Seder is that you want to go on this Mitzrayim. And if you say, the Mishra will help you. It's a special time. I got to go. But I got to tell you one more thing which none of you thought of, which I thought you would think of. So we did three things today, right? What did we do? We did matzah, we did minhagim, and we did sis mitzayim aprati. What you missed is the fifth son, the fifth son. The fifth son, the son that doesn't come to the Seder. The Rebbe ate himself up about the fifth son. When the Rebbe spoke about the fifth son 50 years ago, there were many fifth sons. Today there's more fifth sons. As the time passes, more Yidin become further away. Yidin are not through, become more, there's the next generation, the next generation further, further away. There's the fifth son, the son who's not by the Seder. And you have to bring him to the Seder. You have to include him in the Seder. He doesn't even know how to be any of the Elishal. He doesn't have the intelligence to be quiet. And you have to bring the fifth son to the Seder. You have to give him a Gazai Matzah. And you have to talk about Yitzhiya Smitzayim. You have to tell him that he's a Yid and teach him what he has to do. This is foundational. The Rebbe is so right. The Rebbe is so right about the fifth son. And a lot of people know fifth sons. You know, sometimes fifth sons are not strangers. Sometimes fifth sons are people that we know. Cousins, distant relatives, a fifth son, to include him in the Seder. You send him a little matzah, you talk to him about Pesach. The fifth son is an obsession of the Rebbe's on Pesach, is the fifth son. Okay, Kidlach, I have you tomorrow or not? Some of you. Okay, Chaga, Pesach, Kosher, I'll see you tomorrow, Mitzvah.